Good morning and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our weekly public information briefing. I'm Jan Gardner, Frederick County Executive, and I'm very honored to serve Frederick County as its first county executive. Um, I'm pleased to be here today to talk about my accomplishments in my first 100 days and a little bit about what's next. So during my campaign, I traveled around the county and I listened to the voters. I met with people at a lot of different events, whether it was a fire carnival or a business expo or even at some backyard barbecues. And I heard firsthand what uh, the citizens of the county were concerned with. Many had a lack of trust in government because they felt that decisions were being made outside the public eye. They were also concerned about the sale of citizens in Montevue and the desire to keep the Montevue home and the mission uh, for the citizens of Frederick County. Most of all, I heard concerns about how the county was growing and about all the projects being approved without adequate infrastructure. And I found a lot of concern about a lack of commitment and dedication to public education. So I'm proud of, um, so I promised to the voters that when I was elected that I would begin to work on these and many other issues and I'd report back after my first 100 days. We have transitioned from a county commissioner form of government to charter government and I believe our citizens have seen a change and I've tried to remain open and transparent by having weekly briefings. So here we go. One of my first priorities is to ensure a smooth transition to charter government. It's brand new. I'm the first county executive. How we do things will really lay a foundation uh, for the future of how charter functions. This means a couple of things, developing good working relationships and ensuring good communication between the county executive office and the county council's office. So. I've tried to accomplish that by having weekly standing meetings with County um, President, but Council President Bud Otis and Vice President MC Keegan Air, and I think that's going very well. So we talk about roles and responsibilities, and we talk about what's coming up on the agenda. And we try to make sure that the information the council needs will be provided by county staff. I've asked other counties how often. I've asked other council presidents, actually, in other counties, how often they meet with their county executive. A few will tell them that me that they meet once a week, but many meet, you know, once every other month or so. So I think we're, we're leading the way and doing things right by having strong communication through weekly meetings. I've also wanted to have a smooth transition and a working partnership with our municipal leaders. So I meet monthly with all the municipal mayors, and I also meet separately once a month with Frederick City Mayor Randy McClement. And we've already accomplished a number of things working together. We've worked with the municipalities and our state delegation to build some consensus on a tax equity bill. And really, it was unique to have municipal, county, and state elected officials sitting together at a committee hearing in Annapolis. And one of the members of the committee actually said to me, why is it in Frederick County that you can come to an agreement on something like this when no other county has been able to do that? And I said, it's because of the regular communication, the monthly meetings. Again, this was something we asked in our transition team and asked of other counties, how often do you meet with your municipalities? Most said once a year. And so some said none at all. So we are doing a great job building working relationships to get things done for our citizens. In this uh, photo, you can see uh, a monthly meeting where 11 of the 12 municipal mayors attended and some of our council members to have a meeting with the State Highway Administration about the proposal for the tax signage program, which is uh, the tour tourism signage to have our attractions out on the signs. Working together, just yesterday, I sent a letter to State Highway on behalf of the county executive, the county council, Co President Otis signed the letter, and all of our municipal leaders to demonstrate that we're on the same page with this program. And State Highway has contacted me and will come back and have another meeting with us. I've hired a government affairs and policy director, Roger Wilson, and he's out attending municipal meetings and serving as a liaison on their issues. And we've already solved some of their problems. In fact, just today, 
Uh, Mike Marshner will be in Burkittsville with the mayor. He's organized a meeting with some representatives from DNR to look at grant opportunities to pay for a major drainage problem that they're having, and they don't have the funds in their town to really pay for it. We've also provided water and sewer support to Brunswick and to uh, Walkersville. And I'm reinstituting monthly county municipal staff meetings, which I've tasked to our county administrator, Doug Browning, so that our staff to staff will have a meeting. Uh, we have 12 municipalities, so each month they'll go out and meet with the staff in one municipality. And of course, we know a lot of the work actually gets done at the staff level. So I think that's very important. Uh, working together in Annapolis, um, you know, one of the reasons we decided as a county, as a community, to transition to charter government was so that we could have a stronger voice in Annapolis. And I have to say, we have uh, achieved that. That works. And this is a, a photo of um, presenting our transportation priorities to the delegation and also working with Delegate Krim on the tax equity bill. I'm back as a, a member of the Board of Directors and the Executive Board of the Maryland Association of Counties. I have been invited as a county executive to join the other big seven county executives. It's an informal group, but I am meeting with them, and I've had the opportunity to meet with the presiding officers along with the county executives. And that's a really good place for us to be, to have our issues known and to have a greater voice in Annapolis. It's also been great to be able to take advantage of having some of our former county officials in key positions in the governor's cabinet. For instance, Secretary Budget David Brinkley. I've been able to meet with him on a few occasions, gain a unique insight to the budget and how it might be resolved at the state level, to lobby for state funding for the downtown hotel and conference center, and also to lobby for school construction, for specifically for Frederick High School. And I believe this year we will get a record amount of state school construction funding. And I think that's a success of charter government and our advocacy. I have also ha been able to meet one-on-one -on -one with Governor uh, Hogan, and I've met with him uh, on a couple of occasions. I was invited to the inauguration to the state of the state and had, you know, a key seat. And uh, actually, I was able to sit on the stage for the inauguration. And so as a county executive, we really have much greater access to the decision makers in Annapolis. And that, I think, has been a real positive. Um, working with our federal delegation has also been quite amazing. Um, so far, I've met with Senator Mikulski, Congressman Delaney, and Congressman Van Hollen to work on mutual issues of importance to our citizens. And tomorrow, I'm actually meeting with Senator Cardin for lunch, and we're also going to go out and tour AstraZeneca because of their business expansion there. So we want to work with our federal partners to continue the support of the federal investment in Fort Detrick, at the National Cancer Institute, at the federal contractors, support for our biotech community, including the expansion at AstraZeneca. We always want to talk about obtaining federal dollars for our transportation needs, economic development assistance for our incubators, and hopefully to try to reestablish getting the Fort Detrick Business Development uh, Office off the base and back out into a venue where more of our businesses can have access and get up some contracts with our federal government. So um, as part of the transition, I did establish a transition team in November. I appointed a small, relatively small group of people, but they consist of uh, members with government experience and members of our community who bring business experience, organizational management perspective, and really an outside view of how government should be structured and operate. And it's really a fresh look. I really want to give them thanks for their many, many, many hours here in county government. They've met with all the division directors in some uh, departments. They've met with a lot of other employees. They've reviewed the organizational structure of the county. And I will be presenting next Wednesday the transition uh, report uh, in another public information briefing. We've had the opportunity to learn from others. Uh, we don't need to create the wheel. County um, charter form of government is uh, present in about a third of the counties in Maryland. So along with the transition team, we've met with other county executives, past and present, including former executive Ken Allman, former Baltimore County executive Jim Smith, 
Terry Moore, who is the county executive in Cecil County. And we learned a lot from her because their charter is exactly identical to ours, almost word for word, not quite, but close. And we've met with division di directors and some of their staff so that we could figure out how they best communicated with their councils and how they got things done. And that was very uh, enlightening. They also had a lot to say about how their offices were organized and you know how the organization of government works under charter. I also created uh, four leadership teams. Uh, the first week I was in office on education, jobs, seniors, and community needs. Four uh, key things I heard about in the campaign. Uh, they were 90-day standing commi committees, and they've already made their recommendations to me. That will be the foundation of my four-year strategic plan for the county. Became apparent right off the bat that I really needed to reconnect with county employees to value our county government team as part of the transition and to really, uh, um, uh, really uh, express the pride that we have in our county employees. They are the face of county government. They are the people who get things done. And I recently had a press conference announcing some first steps to value our employees. Uh, we did uh, approve changing all our full-time non-benefited positions to benefited. We added two floating holidays. And we're reestablishing our annual award ceremony to recognize employees with service awards, as well as the annual county picnic. So Commissioner President Bud Otis and County uh, Administrator Doug Browning and I are out and about touring county agencies. This is going to take us a while to do because county government certainly spread all over the county. And uh, we've already visited public works. Um, we're visiting water and sewer this afternoon. We've been out to the Public Safety Training Center. We've uh, visited with Human Relations and the Office for Children and Families, uh, Planning and Zoning, and some other agencies. And we've really met enthusiastic employees. We're very proud of their work and their service to the community. And I think building that county government team has been important to the transition. We've also tried to make sure, as part of the transition, that we have good information for the public. I've been trying to hold a weekly public information briefing. I'm doing a community conversation television show where I interview someone every week. And um, we're using social media to get out some information as well to people. After um, the budget is over and finalized, I am going to begin meet with the county executive nights where I go out into the community around the county to meet with citizens to hear whatever people would like to share. I am also traveling around. I've been to a couple municipal meetings myself in Brunswick and Walkersville. And next week, I'm going to be, maybe it's the week after that, I'm going to be visiting uh, Thurmont to go to the Senior Center uh, to meet with their downtown um, Main Street staff. And I'm also uh, potentially going to do a radio show up in Thurmont so that I'm out and about in the community. So what were some of my 100-day promises and what are some of the things that I've already accomplished and I'm working to accomplish. Well, the first order of business, and this really did come out in the campaign, was to restore trust in government. And that's really fundamental to good government. So I could have um, drafted legislation to strengthen our ethics ordinance, but because I want to have open and good government, have public participation, I did appoint a very diverse task force with a lot of expertise in ethics. And they've been tasked to evaluate the possible creation of an independent ethics commission, strengthening our ethics ordinance to address conflicts of interest, to add back penalties for serious ethics violations so our ordinance has teeth, to evaluate campaign finance reform, and adding a professional code of conduct for elected officials. So they're tasked to come back in 120 days with recommendations. Their recommendations will be reviewed by the State Ethics uh, Commission for consistency with state law. And then uh, hopefully we will introduce uh, legislation. And Council President Otis has agreed to sponsor that. Uh, in the summer to move forward with strengthening our ethics rules. I think this process does engage the public. We're having public meetings of the task force. They're also televised, and they have their own page on the county web page. So I think that's job one, is to, and it's fundamental to good government. One of my priorities was education. Education has always been my, my passion. And my vision for Frederick County is to have world-class schools. We know that excellent public schools lift our students, our families, our property values, and will secure our long-term economic prosperity. 
So what am I doing? Well, I had an education leadership team. I've also built a strong working relationship with our education partners. I have monthly meetings with Superintendent Teresa Albin from our uh, public school system, and also with President Libby Burmaster from Frederick Community College. And I am planning to meet soon uh, with the entire Board of Education as well. I hired a education liaison, Janice Spiegel, who has been present at all things related to education in our county, not just at the Board of Ed, but out in the community at PTA meetings, um, at the community college, and also in support of CREST. I did, uh, as part of my legislative package, support legislation to formally authorize CREST, which is a higher education center. Frederick Center for Research, Education, Science, and Technology. So what is that? That is an uh, education center where uh, universities and colleges from around the state can offer classes. It could be at the community college or it can be at a business location so that we can have a well-trained workforce, particularly in our life science industry. It's very much focused on STEM. When I met with AstraZeneca, one of the things they told me they wanted from government was a pipeline of well-educated, well-trained workers. They want to hire people maybe right out of high school to work in manufacturing, but they want to keep those employees and make sure they have access to education. So this is something I've supported. I also ran for office saying I would fund above maintenance of effort. It certainly is my intent to do that. As I announce my uh, budget on April 15th, I will demonstrate my commitment to public education and funding above maintenance of effort. It is my intent to have a basic formula of maintenance of effort plus 50% of our new dollars for education. We've also had a lot of great things to celebrate in our wonderful public schools. Uh, recently this week, we acknowledge and recognize Maggie Hawk, a first grade teacher from Yellow Springs Elementary School, who was the recipient of the Milken Educator Award. It's very prestigious. And I can tell you when she was surprised with this award at Yellow Springs a few weeks ago, the kids were so excited and you could tell she loved the students in the school and that the students in the school loved her. And that's really what it's all about. As parents, we want great teachers and teachers really do get the job done and we appreciate our teachers and all the support staff who make sure teachers can do their jobs well. We also are honored in our county to have Kemptown Elementary as a blue ribbon school and we did go out there with coffee and donuts one morning to show our appreciation for the good work of the teacher and the staffs in the school and I think that was a, a very exciting accomplishment for our school system. I will say when I announced my capital budget in, uh, on April 15th and I will discuss this a little bit, the public hearing on Monday, Frederick High School will be uh, moved forward on time next year in the CIP. That is our top priority. Another priority was jobs. And you know, we talk a lot about growth and I really wanna focus on jobs and making sure we have a vibrant economy. We know that we have to keep our young people here to make sure we have long-term economic prosperity. And I wanna support a multi-generational workforce, including millennials, all the way up to senior citizens. So as part of our transition team and our leadership team, the Chamber of Commerce has participated through their president and CEO, Elizabeth Cromwell, and she did a survey of all her business um, members about what they wanted to see and what, what the county government could do to support business or to, you know, what kind of government could not do to help get out of the way to make business thrive in Frederick County. And we will be presenting that as part of the transition team report next week. And I think that was really probably the first time that's ever happened in Frederick County. We met with Senator Mikulski a few weeks ago to further advance our federal funding for business support initiatives and jobs. And we talked to her about um, what she could do to help us make economic development work here in Frederick County. Uh, I did announce a number of economic development initiatives last week. A number of those were part of my 100-day commitment um, to the voters. Uh, first, we did elevate the um, Office of Economic Development to be cabinet level, reporting to the county executive, so that people know when they want to do business in Frederick County that they have access to the county executive and that the county executive has their, their um, is open to talking to them. We need to say yes to everybody who calls us that we're interested. And I've renamed them or restored the name of the Office of Economic Development. I also have advertised to create a 
a business and industry cabinet where I want CEOs and owners and top decision makers of businesses to be uh, there, to be a part of my cabinet to provide advice as we move forward with our business initiatives. I want to restore uh, support for our incubator and maybe even establish a second incubator uh, here in the city of Frederick. Um, we reestablished the Small Business Revolving Loan Fund, and I've already advertised for, uh, we're moving forward with advertisement to fill the agricultural specialist in the Office of Economic Development, a key priority of our farming and agricultural community. And it, I do think that we need to support our long-term legacy and traditional industries in Frederick County, and agriculture is certainly one of them. We have the most dairy farms in the state of Maryland, and it is a, an important part of our economy and our community. And we're going to do more to outreach and uh, support our small businesses, not only through the revolving loan fund, but with outreach to small businesses, to minority businesses, and uh, through marketing initiatives, and by looking to join some regional organizations, potentially biohealth innovation. And funding for this will be included in my budget proposal on April 15th. Talking about growth, well, we hired our new uh, uh, division director. It's called Community um, Development right now, but I'm going to take it back to the name of Planning and Permitting. And um, Steve Horn, he came to us from Carroll County. He's worked for Frederick County before. We're very excited to have him back. He's been here for about three weeks. And of course, growth can be uh, very controversial in Frederick County, depending on what it is. And as the first county executive, I want to make sure we balance growth uh, that we focus on job growth, not just residential growth, and that we make sure that we time residential growth with our ability to provide infrastructure, schools and roads, and that as we grow, that we preserve those things we value about our community, our agricultural heritage, our cultural and historic assets. So to that end, I want to make sure we have good government processes and that citizens can participate them and have their voices heard. And I also want to work with the business community and uh, hear what they have to say as well. Uh, the Monrovia Town Center case was recently remanded to the county. Um, I did support that remand in a brief to the court. But I want to make sure that we have a good public process, and this will also depend on the county council establishing such a process. To ensure the timing of residential growth with infrastructure, I would like to revise the APFO, and I'm starting to collect information to do that. I have had input from our transportation planning staff, and Janice Spiegel is working on getting uh, updating background enrollment and student yield numbers. I have not introduced that legislation yet, but we'll look to do that after the budget is over and after the county council's had some time to get its processes in place. During the campaign, I also ran opposed to what I t defined as taxpayer giveaways to residential developers. I have um, pulled the TIF policy and have tasked the county administrative officer to revise that policy so that it will only focus on business growth, really not on residential development. And we'll make sure that there's an immediate tax benefit to the taxpayers and that these are shorter term in number of years. And so uh, I've moved forward to make sure that I've implemented good policy on the use of tax increment financing or TIFs. We do have uh, a number of DRAs out there, Developer Rights and Responsibilities Agreements. Most of those contracts are in court, and uh, that's where they are for the moment. I do have uh, the ability as the county executive to make sure that if we use the tool of a developer right and responsibility agreement in the future, that we will do so in a way that makes sure we get infrastructure that's needed out of it and that we don't waive fees for a 10 or 20 or 30 years because we have an obligation, I think, in government to make sure we have adequate schools, adequate roads, that we don't shift a burden to the taxpayers, and that we can maintain the high quality of life that people want here in Frederick County. Transportation priorities. This is a photo of a meeting that Congressman Delaney held over at the Chamber of Commerce to discuss federal transportation priorities, specifically the importance of I-270. It's important to our economic development, and uh, we do have a partnership with our friends in Montgomery County in terms of making sure we have that transportation corridor functioning so that everybody in um, has access to our federal agencies that are very close to us off I-270. 
And we're currently going through the public process to establish county transportation priorities for the state and for federal funding. And we've gathered information from the Planning Commission, our state delegation. It's the first time we've presented tra transportation priorities to the state delegation as a group. So I think that's an improvement in the process. And recently to our county council. Uh, some of the key things that changed in our transportation priorities is we are very fortunate to have design and engineering funded for the portion of US 15 through the city of Frederick. So now we can make that a top priority for construction funding when that design and engineering is done. And I do intend to prioritize Maryland 194 for project planning. And what's important to note there, there is a lot of interest in that. And this is how we actually engage the community to decide what the scope of the project is and should be. And I recently wrote, wrote a letter to the head of the State Highway Administration asking for an expedited review um, to, to uh, try to move the uh, bid delay forward on the US 15 and Mazakasi Boulevard intersection, which is important to our transportation system and to moving people to uh, in and out of Fort Detrick. Taking care of seniors, uh, seniors was one of my uh, top uh, subjects and a subject of my leadership team. And we really need to do a number of things. We know that our senior population is going to grow fast in Frederick County. The age 65 and over group age cohort is going to grow twice as fast here as it will in the state of Maryland, as it will in the United States, and as it will in Florida. So we need to plan and prepare for that. And we want to make sure that all seniors are able to age in place. So some of the recommendations that came out of the leadership team were, was to revitalize the Department of Aging and make them the go-to place for senior needs to address financial resources and other resources and to um, have volunteer coordination and grants development and to make sure that we have housing and transportation so our seniors can get around. Meals on Wheels was a topic I talked about on the campaign. Uh, we have reviewed that with county staff. We do need to have a volunteer coordinator there, and we do need to phase an expansion of services to some areas of the county that are currently not served, and you will see that in my budget proposal as well. I'm going to establish a st steering committee to implement the recommendations of the 2013 needs assessment, and we've already filled all the vacancies on the Commission on Aging, and um, we did it. When we talked with Senator Mikulski, we also talked about reauthorizing the Older Americans Act. And when that happens, that we need to have funding identified for in-home services, which is just a growing demand. And right now, Medicare and Medicaid basically don't provide for assisted living, and there's very limited dollars for in-home care. Uh, there's also the AIRS program in the Health Department, which stands for... Adult Evaluation and Review Services, and uh, there will be a budget request in uh, uh, the budget proposal to support uh, that program because that's where we send staff out to evaluate the health needs and in-home care needs of people who are seniors living at home who need some support, and there's a huge demand for that. Uh, citizens in Montevue, uh, the uh, court has uh, suspended the the court case and given us 90 days to uh, negotiate on a settlement and we are in deliberations on that now. Um, I did say when I ran for office that I would seek to suspend the sale and to see what we could do and negotiate to continue the mission of service that's been long-standing at Montevue. Of course we're right in the middle of the budget right now uh, where the budget is in flux, waiting to see what the state does, uh, waiting to see what a few other things happen that could wildly swing the budget. We are, as part of the budget process, doing a review of our privatization contracts. And we also have had an independent review um, through the transition team and also uh, with some of our staff on um, what's in the budget and what we can do. We've gone through it with a fine tooth comb. We will have a public hearing on Monday the 23rd to get input from the citizens on the budget appeals or the budget requests. I have not released a recommend recommended budget. I have not released a proposed budget yet. We are really in a very early stage. I won't decide on any of the appeals till I hear from the public. That's how the process is supposed to work. So what's next? Next week we'll do, uh, we'll, I'll present the transition team report and some subset reports. Uh, we'll have our budget presented, which I think will be a big deal on April 15th. Uh, I'll follow that uh, with the state of the county in June, and I'll look to initiate a strategic plan 
on all of the initiatives that came out of the leadership teams with our county division directors and ultimately with the county council. I also want to say that I'm working on a process to develop the next steps for solid waste disposal. Uh, we are looking at doing a facilitated public process uh, where we try to identify and brainstorm ideas that we can then uh, work to develop into uh, what's feasible, what the cost benefits are of each. So I, I look forward to announcing that also sometime uh, within the next month. If you wanna find out more about what's happening in the county executive's office, you can follow us on social media. I'm on Facebook at Frederick County Executive Jan H. Gardner. I'm on Twitter at Frederick County Exec. The county's on Twitter at Frederick County MD. And uh, I do post a lot about what I'm doing out there and where I've been and what's happening on my uh, Facebook page, and I'm trying to expand my use of Twitter. And uh, so for more information, uh, you can email me or contact me through the webpage or give me a phone call. I want to be open to the public. Uh, this is a new form of government. It is a work in progress, and things are going very well. I think we've had a very smooth transition. I've, I, I have um, accomplished many of my first 100 day objectives, but there's more to come and we'll keep working. I really wanna thank my staff in the county executive's office as well as my staff throughout the county. People have really worked hard to try to make the transition to charter government work, to support the new initiatives I've brought into county government. And we are a team, we're working together and our best days are ahead. So with that, I'm open to any questions. Any questions from the media? Sure. Um, you mentioned the ongoing APFO review. Do you have an idea of what you'd like to change about the ordinance? Um, I, I have been given some staff information on those. I, I do uh, want to, what I'm doing is I'm revisioning some of the things that changed since I was last here as president of the board and looking at whether it, things worked or not worked. So I'm not going to necessarily revert back to where we were uh, four or five years ago. I'm really going to look to have a meaningful adequate public facilities ordinance that tries to time our residential housing growth with our ability to provide roads and schools. So I do think we need to go back to looking at 100% of adequacy on schools. Um, but some of the changes that were made to transportation, I'll keep, some I'll change. So we really have to update the basic information. We haven't updated student yields, we haven't updated background enrollment. And if we're gonna make changes, we need to make sure that all the data that supports that is up to date and correct so that we have a fair and even process for everybody. So I've always wanted to have a fair process. I've always wanted to balance the needs of our need to grow with our ability to ensure our quality of life. Um, and then I remember from your 100 year, I'm um, sorry, 100, 100 year. 100 it day. just seems like 100 <laughs> years that I've been here, Bethany. <laughs> 100 day goals um, that you wanted to develop a four year plan with the Board of Education. Um, what's, how's that coming along? Well, the, the um, school system has developed its own strategic plan. They have a technology strategic plan that's in process. So once they are done with that, then I will look at that. I have to really get through the legislative session, the budget, and my own strategic planning process here first uh, before I move forward with that. But I do think it's important that we're on the same page, that we communicate well, and that we have the shared priorities and goals. And so I think we're accomplishing that through our, our regular meetings and our regular communication. But we're not gonna accomplish everything in one year. So that's the whole objective of that strategic plan is to have some longer term goals that you can phase in. Um, and then finally, for your strategic plan, when do you think that that might be ready to unveil? I think um, we'll start that after we get through the budget. You know, we have a whole new process on the budget and once I announce that budget and present it on April 15th, the council has a very short period of time to review it and do whatever they want to do with that. So again, I think we need to get through that process, do that well. There may be some tweaking of how we go through that. And again, that's why fundamental to all this is having that good working relationship with the council president, the council vice president, the other council members, so that if we need to adjust the process, we can do that. So I think after that in June or July. It's a lot to bite off in the first uh, three months. So, but I think we've done a lot and I think we've moved the uh, county forward, okay? Does anybody else have any questions or any comments? 
I want to thank you all for being here today. I want to thank you for watching this presentation. And uh, stick with us. Participate in the public process. This is all about ensuring good government and good services to the citizens of Frederick County. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.